Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy. My name is Nick and today we are going to take a look at the new approvals app within Microsoft Teams. Uh, approvals have been around for a little while now, uh, mainly a part of the old Microsoft Flow, now known as Power Automate. But uh, there's some new functionality that comes along with this new app for Microsoft Teams that allows us to create approval flows directly inside Microsoft Teams. So we're going to have a look and just see how to go about using this new approvals app. If you find this video useful, informative, maybe uh, a little entertaining, then do go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you're new to the channel and not yet subscribed, do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here at That Office Guy. With all that said, let's jump on over to Microsoft Teams and take a look at this new approvals app. Okay, so here we are within Microsoft Teams. And the first thing that we want to do is actually add the new application into our Microsoft Teams um, console here. So first thing we want to do, there's two ways of approaching this. So uh, the first thing is we could open up the application um, you know, themselves just from the bottom icon here in the bottom left-hand side. And we can search for the approval flows from here. So we can just go approval. Um, and search. That's going to search and find the approvals application. So that's your first method. The other way of doing this is to come over here to the three dots, the ellipsis, more options, click on that. Uh, and again, you can search for approvals from here. And once you've found it, you can go ahead and click on it. By clicking this, it will install the application directly into Microsoft Teams. And once that loads up, uh, we can see all of the various different approvals that we have already been running. What we can do is actually left uh, right click here um, and pin the approvals app into our task bar here, our, our app bar. OK, so we're going to pin that in and therefore it will always stay there. So in a similar way that you saw approvals inside the Power Automate um, app, now you can see it split out uh, into its own application. So now we can see uh, received approvals and our sent approvals okay and they're split into two different categories so if i go ahead and click on sent we can see the ones that i've sent and we can click on and just look at the received as well from this screen uh, we can see the title of the uh, approval we can see the status of the approval when it was created who created it and who it was sent to okay and the same thing applies for the sent messages as well so we can see the sent approvals the approval status the created behind uh, who created it and requested it versus who it was sent to. Okay, and obviously this is for uh, that office guy default, but you obviously have options here to filter that into multiple uh, accounts as well, which is really useful. The other things that we can do directly on this screen here is actually create a new approval request. We can click that button and it shows directly here inside uh, the approvals app, you can go ahead and create yourself a new approval. So we can go ahead and give this a title of test um, and then we can go and send it to someone, right? So who will be approving this particular test uh, approval? Well, I can send that to uh, a couple of different people. Let's see who comes up if we have Nick. I have obviously me. So I'll send that to myself. I'll also send it uh, to my brother here, Chris. We'll send that to him as well. And when you have more than one person who might be able to approve a request, you get this option here to say that you require everybody to approve the request. And if not, you can toggle that off and therefore it doesn't matter. The first person effectively can approve it. And um, so sometimes you might have multiple stakeholders that require you to have multiple people um, actually approve the request. Uh, on some occasions you might have multiple people, but only one of them is actually needed to approve it. And the first one to get there and approve it wins. Okay. So in that case, I'm going to leave that toggled off to say that anyone can basically approve this request. Uh, I will remove Chris from now, which will obviously deactivate that function and just send this approval to myself. I can add additional notes about this approval. So I can say this is a test. OK, and you could have uh, several different notes here that make it a little bit easier about what you're trying to actually request. Uh, and obviously we can add attachments as well. So let's hypothetically say that you've been working on a PowerPoint presentation and uh, you want to get the approval of your manager to say that this PowerPoint presentation is ready for presenting to the board, say. Um, in which case, you know, you could go ahead and actually add the attachment here. You can upload it from your computer. Now, some functionality that I'd like to think would be there in the future uh, would be to be able to bring, bring in uh, all of your team's um, files and attach one from there or OneDrive or something like that. But if you have your files synchronized to your desktop, um, you will be able to um, basically 
um, pull those in from your desktop anyway. So once you have everything as needed, you can go ahead and click send. Uh, that will create your approval and send it to the person uh, that you are trying to get approved. Okay, so that just take that one second, uh, it will go through and add it to our list here sent. And because we sent it to ourselves, it will also appear as uh, you know requested. So a few things uh, to look at, right? Under the sent section here, we can see the test. We can see that we've requested it. We requested it this particular time uh, and who requested it and who it was sent to. If we go to received, we can see that it was sent to us and you know, so you can easily see exactly what's going on. The other thing that you may have noticed, we have the activity feed. If we go to the activity feed, we can see that the request uh, was also sent directly to myself. And it pops up into a nice new card like this so you can easily see what is going on. So you can see that a test was created. This is a test, which was the description of my request. Um, and we also see that I was uh, the person who was sending the request and it was basically going to myself as well. So uh, requested by myself and it's pending a response from myself as well. So again, uh, as I am responding to this, I could add some notes and say, yes, uh, the test worked. Okay, and then I can go ahead and approve. Otherwise, I would say, no, the test did not work and I could reject it for whatever reason. Or because I also created this request, I could cancel it as well. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and approve it and that's going to submit that approval into the system. Uh, and give that a moment and it'll update our list within here to say that actually it was approved. And also another notification came through to say that it was approved as well because ultimately uh, you're fully kept in the loop here. I can click on that uh, approval and we can see here, yes, it was approved. And I also see the comments that were attached to it. Uh, I can close that down and we can see it was approved up here. So that's the first way you can go ahead and create uh, an approval directly inside the approvals app. Um, so if you're doing ad hoc things, you just need to get those requests out there. It's very straightforward to do from here. Obviously, you can still use Power Automate to automate a lot of processes as well. Uh, and I've talked about that in a few other videos in terms of holiday approvals and requesting that dynamically via Power Automate. So do check out those videos if they're of interest. The next thing that we can do is head over to our team section. And from our general channel, we can start a new conversation. And from here, we also get the ability to create an approval. Uh, this time we're gonna be creating approval within our team's channel here. So very, very good to see. And uh, so I can go ahead and say, um, this is test two. Um, and I can go ahead and ask for myself to uh, approve this one as well. I can say um, here are some notes. Um, just here right and i can attach um, some you know documents if i needed to as well custom responses now here you can use these um very very quickly um if, you know basically you have two options here you can say you can write something um you know such as uh, yes or no and you know you can have that as a custom response uh, and you get to add in two right so um dynamically you can add two of these but power automate will let you have more so i'm going to untoggle that uh, i won't talk too much about that in this particular video but uh, it's definitely something to investigate if you want more functionality from your approval flows um so what i'm going to do is go ahead and click send on this uh, second approval uh, that's going to do a couple of things because we did this inside of a channel, we get something different here. So it looks like you haven't uh, used approvals for this conversation before. By uh, adding approvals, you agree to the privacy policies and terms and conditions uh, that uh, you know, underlying service of Power Automate. And we're going to approve that and click continue. And what this basically allows us to do is it lets us actually add the approval directly into our channel here. So now we can see that it's been requested. It's come through uh, into our activity feed. We also have desktop notifications enabled. It will also pop up there. Um, but this allows us to see within this channel everything that is going on with this particular approval. And we can view the details here directly as well. And again, we could come in here and just say, um, no, sorry, um, not approved. Uh, for example, right? Uh, and we can go ahead and reject it. Uh, in doing so, it will also update this card on this channel here to say it was rejected. And we also have those details. Likewise, we also have the activity feed showing us uh, the two pieces of activity that have gone on here, uh, the rejection and the request. Okay, so they both appear within your activity feed as well.
which is really useful. And so there's lots of new ways and fun ways to interact with approvals within Microsoft Teams. Uh, they're very useful and powerful features that I do recommend that you guys take a look at. Um, now, if I jump on out of here and we take a look, it's a fantastic opportunity, guys, to start using um, you know, all of these new approvals uh, inside Microsoft Teams. And if you're used to using something like Power Automate, then do definitely continue using Power Automate. Um, but this is a new uh, way to basically manage those approvals as well within Microsoft Teams. And it gets, makes everything very um, fluid in the way that you work. So do recommend it, you guys check it out. So, uh, it's fantastic. And uh, as always, if you did find this video useful, uh, and a little informative, do go ahead and hit up that like button and subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here uh, at That Office Guy. And with that said, we hope you have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll catch you all in the next one.